Here we go. So, <clears throat> at the end of the day, I want my reviews to not be Mr. Brown sat here and talked to me for two hours, okay? Because I can talk all day, but I, I already have a basic understanding and knowing of knowledge of the stuff. I want to test you, okay? If you have no idea what this stuff is, then now is the time for you to raise your hand and say, look, hey, could you break that down a little bit more? But my, my plan here is to go over all of these things that may or may not be familiar, especially if you read the chapter. Yeah. Especially if you read the chapter, may or may not be familiar. Okay, my goal is to break down each and every one of these things so that each and every one of you has basic understanding. Yes, there's one, two, three, four, five, six of you in here, but you need to focus on you right now and make sure that you're getting every little bit that you need. So, anyway, let's talk about sebum. First off, what is sebum? The oily, acidic substance. Right. Oily, acidic substance that comes from where? The sebaceous glands. Sebaceous glands. That's right. Oily, acidic substance that comes from sebaceous glands, and it does a lot of stuff for us. What's one of the things that it does for us, guys? Lubricates, Lubricates the hair, right? Lubricates the hair. It makes, it, uh, makes our hair really soft. But not only does it make our hair really soft, what else does it make really soft? Your skin. Our skin. Okay. We need to understand what sebum is, first off. Sebum is oil. And moreover, we need to understand where it comes from, the sebaceous gland. And then we also need to understand its function and how, how, we, how we apply that to, how we realistically apply that to the body. <clears throat> So, not only, we already said it keeps hair uh, and skin soft and pliable, but that acidic substance that's in sebum is going to do what? Why is it acidic? Fights bacteria. Fights bacteria. Exactly that. That sebum is going to fight the bacteria that lives on your skin. That bacteria is what we call ubiquitous. It is everywhere. It's on your skin, it's on your eyes, it's on your uh, hands, it's in your mouth, it's everywhere. So we need to be protected constantly from that. And that oiliness of our skin, man, man, we hate that oil. That oiliness of our skin is actually protecting us, okay? And then finally, I want you to know that sebum actually helps you pre prevent water loss. Helps you prevent water loss. Okay. So, why would someone need a physical examination? For school, uh, camp and stuff. School and sports. camp and sports. That's exactly what I'm looking for, okay? Um, they're going to need a physical exam a lot of the times for employment. Hey, you want to work here? You've got to make sure you're healthy first. And that kind of makes sense because if you are the sick person, like seriously, chronically sick person, and then you decide you want to get a job at the hospital, well, wait a minute. Let's make sure you're all right first. So you'll, you'll find that when you go out and you get a job, especially for those big health care systems, they're going to give you a physical. Okay? You're going to go through a whole chain of people uh, that will basically quiz you about your health to see if you're healthy enough to work there, and if not, treat you, okay? So, uh, sometimes a prerequisite for employment, sometimes in order to do sports, I don't know if y'all remember way back when, in high school, for some of y'all, maybe you did track or you wanted to do cheerleading or something like that, and they always gave you that little form, they said, go to the doctor, you gotta get a physical first. Mm -hmm. okay. And then also for school admission, okay? Some colleges won't let you in without a physical, but moreover, like we know that elementary schools, okay? You can't get into the school system if you don't have that immunization record, okay? So sometimes you need a physical for that. And then also summer camp attendance, okay? We saw in California how the measles kind of broke out and kill, uh, killed a lot of kids out there, okay? Because people weren't vaccinated. All right. So those physical exams, those immunizations are really, really important. But moving on, let's talk about lithotomy versus prone versus dorsal recumbent versus supine. So if you are in the lithotomy position, 
then what what are we about to do? Probably. The um pap smear. Vaginal okay. examination. Let's, let's just call it that. Let's call it a vaginal examination. But remember, the lithotomy position is are you are your feet on the table or are they in stirrups? Stirrups. Stirrups, okay. Now what uh, what is it called when your feet are just on the table? Dorsal. Dorsal, dorsal recumbent. Dorsal recumbent. Okay. Then I want you to understand prone versus supine. If you are prone, you no, you're telling me your stomach. Okay. If you are supine, you're on your back. On your back. Okay. But I want you guys to realistically think about those things. I want you to realistically apply those. Okay. So lithotomy being for uh, a vaginal exams. If somebody is prone, it means that we need to do something. We need to look at somebody's back. Okay, working in a chiropractor's office, you're always you're gonna pl place people in the prone position a lot. Okay. But anyway, what are the two layers of the skin? The dermis and epidermis. Very good. What is the layer underneath the derm the dermis called? So the cutaneous. Or. The hypodermis. Very good. You need to be able to distinguish what the two layers of the skin are. First off, the epidermis and the dermis. And that kind of makes sense. Epi meaning outer or outside. So the epidermis and the dermis are the two outer layers of the skin, or excuse me, the two layers of the skin itself. But underneath that, we have that subcutaneous, otherwise called hypodermis. Who can tell me what that hypo part means? Under. Underneath. Okay, it means deficient or below. Okay, deficient or below. Sub means under. Okay, so if we're talking about hypodermis, usually utilizing one of those words below, we're talking about below the dermis. But more than that, what does the subcutaneous layer do for us? It insulates. It insulates us, okay? So a little bit of that fat, okay? Because we now we should know that subcutaneous or adipose tissue is really, all it is is fat, okay? And it'll uh, serve us, serve several functions, but one of those main functions is to insulate us, okay? To help us in thermoregulation, like you look cold right now, mm -hmm. okay? The more meat you have on your bones, less cold you are, okay? <clears throat> or I should say the more fat you have on your bones, the less cold you are. Because <clears throat> it's insulation. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you have special kids. Yeah. Probably also anemic. Iron um, anemic. But uh, blah, 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 blah. What was that? Yes. Okay, so let's talk about other functions of the subcutaneous layer. Okay? Not only does it insulate us, but what else does it do? It makes new cells. Hmm? Is that what you mm -hmm. might, no. What else does the subcutaneous, what else does that fat do? Hmm. Hmm. Cricket, cricket. What else does fat do? Well, it helps store uh, energy. Cushions. Cushions us. Helps to cushion us. But it also provides us with energy. Hmm. So both of you were right. Okay. And that kind of makes sense. The more cushion you have, Mm -hmm. Okay, the more it's going to cushion the insides, right? Mm -hmm. We need that fatty layer in order to stop us from breaking our bones quite so easily when we just run into the side of the table. Okay. Popular <clears throat> today. <clears throat> However, I want you to know that the subcutaneous layer does not lubricate the skin. Okay, what does lubricate the skin? The glands. Which glands? Sebaceous. Which make what? Sebum. Sebum. Which is? It's oily and Very good. You guys got it? Okay. It's going to get a little harder. Sorry. That light off is fine, though. Oh, you guys are okay. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> It'll turn off in a few minutes again. Sorry. <laughs> All right. So, anyway, let's talk about Wayne Trojan. Okay. What are, first off, what do we call it when we weigh somebody? When we're taking <coughs> someone's measurements, what are those called? It's called, wait a second. It does start with a man. Uh, mes 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 
Menseration. Yeah, y'all, there we go. Menseration. Some one of y'all I, said that. That was a collective struggle. Mensa, 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 to check for any changes or you check for any changes. Check for any changes. So, I mean, that can still kind of go into the observed patterns of growth. But we'll also check a, a, a patient, excuse me, a child's weight in order to assess their healthiness, their nutritional level, their nutritional state. Okay? If they're having nutritional problems, if they are malnourished, okay? Pediatrics is actually one of like the, it's, it can be really happy and great, but it can, when it's bad, boy, it is bad. It's like, how can you, how could you ever do this to your child? Um, and you see people do the craziest things to their child. They lock them up, they don't feed them, they beat them down, um, all of the above, okay? <clears throat> and it's just like it's sad, but we also, we, but we need to check these things in order to make sure that child is growing properly their st- or the growth is not stunted. But moreover, we need to check their weight for medication, okay? Mm-hmm. Now, we can't give you an adult mm-hmm. dose of, of medication, right? We gotta base it off of your weight, okay? When you're a child at the very least, okay? So we're gonna do it to assess their level of growth, to assess uh, their nutri- if they're, if they're Nutritionally sound, pretty much. Nutrition is going to be a key word there. And then also to give them medications. We got to know their, uh, their height and weight, those mensurations. What are, we, what are going to be the two preferred uh, patient identifiers? Name, Name and uh, birthday. All right. Yep. Name, date of birth. Name, birthday. That's right. So that one's easy. You guys already got that. Should you ever lift with your hips? No. No. Okay. Lift with your what? Back knees. 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 Okay. okay. Um, what are the three parts of a physical exam? Um, history, the physical physical examination, and uh, what you got, what you call it, lab. Very good. Those three things is what I want you to know. Okay. History, history the uh, physical, physical examination exam. itself. And then the laboratory <laughs> test, okay? History, physical examination itself, and laboratory <laughs> test, okay? That's the parts of a physical exam. Note that therapeutic procedures are not included in a physical exam, okay? Because we're just assessing your body from head to toe, okay? So therapeutic therapy is not gonna be included in those, in those three, only three things. History, the physical exam itself, and the laboratory test related to it. Okay? Um, if I were to put you in the lobotomy position, what am I going to be looking for? Okay. The stirrups? Hmm? Oh, wait. It's, well, gonna, for it's vaginal. Vaginal mm-hmm. examination. You need to be able to uh, put those together. Okay? Vaginal examination is going to be, if we're doing a vaginal examination, we need to put the patient in a lobotomy. Position. Okay? Now it's going to get start getting a little harder, guys. For this, I would highly recommend you open your crack open those old books. Okay? Because I'm going to ask you what this stuff means, and if you don't know, I want you to look it up. Let's go. Anyway, so, atopic dermatitis. I know it's like above something. Dermatitis is inflammation of the skin. Well, A means right. without. Without? Dermatitis is the inflammation of the skin. Yes. It's just whatever topic means. Which would be place, location, and pertaining to. So, inflammation of the skin usually associated with a family history of how. Keywords. What family? It is the family history. Atopic dermatitis is usually associated with family history. Atopic dermatitis uh, is 
Actually, I have our key that tells me where all of this stuff is. Atopic dermatitis, okay, is going to be usually chronic. Chronic. And because you need to, uh, honestly, very honestly, you're not going to be able to memorize these full definitions. Of course, you're going to look at dermatitis, you're going to say, okay, well, dermat means skin, and then itis means inflammation. So you know inflammation of the skin, but that's not going to give you the answer. Okay, you need to be able to associate at atopic dermatitis with chronic dermatitis, usually associated with family history of allergic disorders. Okay, but anyway, just focus in on that family history, chronic dermatitis. Family history, chronic dermatitis. And you should be able to find that on page, like you said, reference 143. Scopy means visual examination or visual examination of. And then that Odo is going to uh, be ears. Okay? Otoscope is a typical thing that's going to be in the exam room. Typical instrument that's going to be in the exam room. And like I said, it's going to be used to look at someone's ears. <laughs> me. Now I want to talk to you about this next thing, which may or may not be strange to you. The Tzank test. Yeah. Figure it out. What is Tzank? The microscopic examination of lesions for the purpose of diagnosing herpes. Which type of herpes? For the purpose of doctor doctor and herpes that? simplex. What page is that? You said 96? 20, 26. 26, 26, 26. Absolutely, she is absolutely right. Um, because she's such a good reader. But, like I said, you need to be able to associate this stuff with something that you can use, okay? So those key words that I want you to focus in on for the Tzank test is that it means a microscopic examination. Okay, it is microscopic examination. And then for the purpose of herpes, Diagnosing herpes zoster and herpes simplex. Who knows what herpes zoster is? Shingles. shingles. And what is shingles? Seems like a chicken chicken right? for the old people. For the old people. Late stage chicken box. Yep. Basically so from Vera Say again? I had it bad when I was a kid. Me so too. I, I still got a chance mark. Of getting I still got a mark right here. So I think it's still there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Once the varicella virus is inside, yeah. 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 I thought it's if you didn't have your chicken pox, then you get the shingles. No, no, no. it's because you have the virus that you oh, put that's in. Yeah. Up. Once you have so the virus inside, inside of you, do they do shingle shots. <laughs> they do. I can't get that. I hated the chicken pox. Like I was up all night in <laughs> oatmeal bath. Like I hated that. Oh. I hated my and I was young. I caught it from this girl at school. Stupid girl. No. Um, that's that's got to suck. I've never had a chicken pox. Yeah, she came in. I had the oatmeal back. I like the oatmeal back. It was okay. It helped me stop itching. I just didn't like being woke up in the middle of the night. Itching. Dead sleep. Being put in cold bath. She would have said that three times now. That must have been. No, really <laughs> it really was like terrorizing. <laughs> well, and then I had a relapse with the fever like two weeks later. Wow. Just the fever right away. That's, that's terrible. I had a really, really bad. <laughs> well, at least you hopefully you never get it again. That would really suck. But anyway, let's talk about cryosurgery. Where did you find that? Page 29. Page 29. Very good. Okay, so page 29, just send the page there. Um, if we're doing cryosurgery, cryosurgery, as she says, is the destruction of tissue 
through the use of extreme cold, usually liquid nitrogen. Okay? Destruction of tissue through using extreme cold. And that kind of makes sense if you think about it. If you break that word down, like uh, cryo means really, really cold. Okay? So be able to relate that cryosurgery with extreme cold, usually liquid nit nitrogen. Um, they have somebody on Instagram doing the, this process right here, heritage, like literally scraping people's. We're talking about the fragment? Yes, that is um, disgusting. Yeah, it's the worst. Oh, we saw a video on it yesterday. We saw no, thank God. I, was I didn't see a video. You didn't see a video? Uh, oh, what is we, it? we just had a picture. Oh, yeah. Well, I'll show you. I want to see a video. That is nasty. It's the worst. It's the worst. Those patients are in like so much pain. And they can't have pain medicine because it, really? it'll make the blood vessels. We just say dilate or something. They'll start bleeding. That's nasty. It's the oh. worst. It really is the worst. So what's the one, what's the one where, because I saw a video. Is that the same thing like they were like scraping people's pimples off? No. Like it was an actual pimple. Like, and like, they just scraped it off. And like you could see all the stuff coming out. No, so not what is that called? That's gonna be, I used to watch like, uh, like we're moving, yeah, yeah, like cysts and stuff, and I used like, to watch the all that white up. Now my arms like white. Right, let's let's keep moving. Yeah, no, <laughs> that's yeah. how I feel. <laughs> that sounds terrible. So um, <laughs> let's talk about um, like I said, late stage varicella usually comes in the form of what shingles. You need to know that. Okay, um, now you need to understand, you're going to see this question like, like four times, okay? You need to understand what bacterial analysis is. And it's when we culture, excuse me, culture and serology of lesions, lesions to help diagnose disorders such as impedigo, okay? Is what we call bacterial analysis. Culture and serology of lesions to help diagnose disorders. Culture and, culture and serology of lesions. Serology, S E R O O O G Y. Okay. Say it one more time. -E culture and yes. serology okay. of lesions to help diagnose. Okay. Understand? Let's let's see if, let's see if we can understand that a little bit more because. It's one thing to know the definition, it's another thing to have an understanding of it, okay? So, culture means that we are taking a sample of it, and we are literally putting it on a culture plate, okay? It's those little Petri dishes, I don't know if you guys still with me? Yeah. You understand what I'm talking about? So, a little Petri. dishes, you only scrub down the urine, and then you took the sediment off the bottom, and you put it on the dish, and you looked at it on the microscope? No. No? That's, that's... That, that was a slide. A Petri dish is like a little round uh, dish which has what's called media in it. At, yes, uh, agar it has media in it which is going to uh, stimulate the growth of whatever bacteria was on there. It's basically like a garden for bacteria. Um, oh, so then it'll be, you know, grow and then you can check it. Check it. You can, you can study it. That's right. Okay, and then when we do serology, serology is the study of immune reactions, particularly antibody and antigen reactions. So uh, basically what we are doing is we're going to culture it, basically grow it in order to study it, and then we're going to examine how it's affecting your immune system. How is your immune system reacting to it? And if we understand how your immune system react is reacting to it, then a lot of the times it will help assist us in diagnosing. Okay, you guys are taking my D already, right? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, we have. Yeah. Well, you only, if you only have one more mod left, then you must take it <laughs> at some point. Um, <clears throat> but yes, so mod E, you learned about uh, the immune system and the different types of white, white blood cells, basophils, eosinophils. Oh, okay, yeah. Basophils, eosinophils, uh, uh, lymphocytes, and uh, monocytes, and just one more, I forget, neutrophils, okay? Um, those five types of, of white blood cells, but particularly we need to know, or I guess we don't need to know, but it particularly helps us 
uh, by saying, well, neutrophils respond to uh, viruses. So that if we do a blood cell count, a CBC on somebody with diff, and we do a CBC with diff, what, well, first off, what tube is that going to be? No. Lavender tube. Lavender tube. It's okay. You're going to get that. Uh, so if we do a CBC with diff, which basically means a complete blood count with differential, so uh, examining the white blood cell counts as well. Um, <clears throat> But if we do a CBC with diff and we see an elevated neutrophil level, then that tells us, well, you have a virus because your body is responding with neutrophils. That kind of makes sense? Yeah. Okay. So that's going to be the whole purpose. You will see bacterial analysis again and again in two different ways. Okay. So you need to understand what bacterial analysis is. Culture and serology are going to be those key words. Let's talk about cellulitis. Okay. If it's acute, what does that mean? Sudden, rapid onset. Okay. Means you're just walking along and it happened. Woo! Dang. Hurting now. So cellulitis is going to be, remember cellulitis is acute, but like you also said, it is acute and it's diffuse spreading within the solid tissue. Acute, diffuse, acute, diffuse spread. It's gonna, uh, gonna be those key words there. Acute and diffuse spread. Of no, solid within solid. Hmm? Just yeah. yeah, basically it's a way to describe the spreading. It's, it's diffusing throughout, okay? Like, for example, I'm sure you said like this. picture right there with that eye. Where with would the they side, go in for the eye? Yeah. They would go in like right there. Wow. Right under they would start going underneath the skin almost like you're drawing somebody's blood. Go under the skin right underneath and then they would go in. So would the needle have a curve? No. What would it have a curve? Take it's just a regular it. syringe needle. Okay. Oh, that number. But what if hmm? that number That's nasty. Oh well, my they God. Mean, it's not gonna hurt that much. But anyway that's cellulitis, okay? Acute, diffuse spreading. 
Okay? And then finally, uh, about this one, I want to talk to you guys about speculums. Okay? We're going to use a speculum <clears throat> to open a body's orifice or cavity for viewing. So, for example, you have a nasal speculum, which is going to open up your nose so that we can view it. You have a vaginal speculum that's going to open up your vagina for viewing. Okay. Um, 89. All right, y'all still with me? Mm -hmm. Okay, sweet. So that's part one of the video.